Hey guys, this is Jan for Chess24 with the Altibox Norway Chess Round 5 Game of the Day. I'm filling in for Peter Svidler who's struggling with his back, but he will be back for the live commentary with me tomorrow. At least we hope so. All the best to Mr. Svidler. As Game of the Day, I have chosen the encounter between Yu Yang Yi, the Chinese 25-year-old getting his first shot in a non-Chinese super tournament and he's been doing very well so far, has been winning. Some Armageddons only lost one classical game against Wesley So, more than holding his own and this time around he is facing the world number two Fabiano Caruana who I believe needs no introduction. Yu Yang Yi is playing with the white pieces in the classical game and as we know if there is a draw in this classical game, the players would move on to an Armageddon where white gets extra time and has to win the game. But let's start with the classical. Yu Yang Yi with white goes for 1 d4 and the players discuss the good old Catalan after knight f3, d5, c4, e6, g3. The Catalan has been a headache for many a black player, mainly when they're looking for a way to play for a win or complicate matters. There are well-established main lines like bishop e7 and bishop b4 check, bishop d2, bishop e7, luring this bishop here. But in both these lines, black has found it tough to set the board on fire. That's why I was very interested in this game because Karana chooses something that's not that mainstream. Looks a bit risky, but it's very interesting. He goes d takes c4. This is still a mainstream move, but after bishop to g2, Karana plays the very rare move pawn to c6. Nowadays if you see this position in high level games, more often than not, black goes for the move c5, castles knight c6. But here once again after d takes c5, it's very hard to generate any winning chances as the black player. White will regain his c4 pawn and put some pressure in an endgame. So Karana plays c6, a move that very clearly has the intention to hang on to his sacrifice pawn with pawn to b5. This line has been around for a while, but I noticed there has been a recent fashion that I was not aware of before this game. <clears throat> C6 has been played by some strong players and matters look a lot more difficult than they used to. White has a choice here. If he decided to castle, then black would very much hang on to the pawn, go b5, followed by bishop b7. And while white can still get compensation for it, it's not gonna be a smooth ride at all play becomes very messy. Instead, one obvious move is the move pawn to a4, stopping black from going b5. But here, black has started playing the move pawn to c5, and now they argue that the white pawn on a4 in these lines with c5 and knight c6, or bishop d7 and bishop c6, does not help the white case at all, but instead weakens the b4 square, making matters a little easier for black to handle. Therefore, understandable that Yu Yang Yi does not go for either of these moves, but instead he plays the third principle choice here, the move knight to e5. Immediately attacking this pawn, and in case of b5, also keeping an eye on the c6 pawn. Karana plays the move bishop to b4 check, and Yu Yang Yi plays bishop to d2. White were to play knight to c3, then black can play knight d5 with tempo attacking this guy, maybe preparing knight to b6 or pawn to b5. It's a different story, but black is supposed to be okay there. So, bishop to d2 is played, this move has been seen in some high-level games. I believe Kramnik tried it twice some years ago, but Kramnik played it with the idea of taking on d4. And after bishop takes b4, queen takes e5, play gets very, very messy. Black is two pawns up, but white clearly has great compensation with this bishop controlling the dark square, stopping black from castles. I clicked around a bit and my computer seems to be quite happy with white's prospects here. After knight to a3, pawn to b5, bishop to d6, queen takes b2, and short castles. Black is now three pawns up, but the main factor in this position is this very, very strong bishop on d6, keeping the black king boxed in and in the center. And the longer you let the computer think here, the more it likes white's position. So no surprise that a player as well prepared as Fabiano Caruana has something else in mind, and he plays the latest fashion, bishop back to e7. He's arguing, he's lured the bishop to d2, and now that the pawn on d4 is under attack, white has to play a move in order to defend that pawn that he won't really like. Yu Yang Yi plays the most natural move, pawn to e3, 
and we see Karana's idea. If he were to continue quietly here, he'd just be somewhat worse after castles, knight takes c4. Why is always a bit better in these positions? Because his bishop on the long diagonal is so strong. So black has to find a way to do something about that. And Karana's point is pawn to b5. This is a sacrifice, because white can very much take on c6. And after knight takes c6, bishop takes c6, bishop to d7, bishop takes a8, white would win in exchange. However, it turns out that after queen takes a8, black has very decent compensation for that investment by controlling his long diagonals, putting pressure on the light squares. There were some recent grandmaster encounters here, where white played f3 and black continues to put pressure by going pawn to e5. After d takes e5, knight to g4, this knight will recapture this pawn using this pin, then end up on the d3 square, giving black very proper compensation for his investment. Therefore, no big surprise that Yu Yang Yi decides to go his own way, although it does look to me like knight takes e6 might be the critical battleground of this entire variation. But Yu Yang Yi plays a4, threatening a takes b5, and that threat is very hard to parry. You can't go a6 because after a b5 you can't recapture it either way because the rook on a8 is dropping. And one move that we discussed in the live show is the move knight to d5. However, it does not quite work because of a little subtlety here that used the fact that this bishop was already on d2. It turns out that after bishop to a5, black is in real big trouble. The point is queen to d6 is the only square the queen has available. And now white plays knight to c3, hitting the pawn on b5. And if black were to defend it with a6, then knight e4 traps the queen in the middle of the board. Check it out, it has no square where it can go to. And white just wins. Therefore, after a4, black really does not have much choice. The only move he can play is pawn to b4, which at first sight looks like the failure of black strategy, because now white can just take the pawn on c4, and he still has all these pluses I talked about earlier, with the bishop on the long diagonal, the knight has a nice square, and so on and so forth. But there are some factors here that work in black's favor, the main one being that this knight on b1 finds it really, really hard to enter the game. These squares are controlled, this square is blocked by his own bishop, and it won't be that simple for white to regroup and get this knight into the game. At the very least, he will have to spend some time on it, and Caruana shows that he has figured out how to use the time. He starts with the cunning move knight bd7, once again offering the pawn on c6, and if white were to take that pawn after bishop takes c6, he would once again play without the rook on a8, go bishop to a6, and here this rook really can't be taken, because after queen takes a8, it's a double attack against the rook on h1, and the knight on c4. You can make other moves here after bishop a6, bishop b5, is what the computer wants, sidestepping this rook c8, ca covering the knight. But then black goes bishop b7, occupies the diagonal once again, this time only at the price of a pawn. After let's say castles, a6, bishop d7, knight d7, black with his very strong bishop, should have excellent compensation for the pawn. Therefore, Yu Yang Yi decides not to enter any of this, plays the move pawn to b3, protecting this knight on c4 before it gets hit, gets hit by bishop a6, but sort of admitting that the opening might not really have been going his way. Because Karana plays bishop a6 anyway, once again offering this pawn on c6, which would transpose after rook to c8 to lines we just saw, bishop b5, bishop b7. And once again, Yu Yang Yi declines that invitation, instead gets right on reorganizing his queenside pieces by playing bishop to c1. He could also have played castles, which might look more natural, but then after rook to c8, intending pawn to c5, black really does not face any problems. So bishop c1 played, Karana follows through with the same idea, rook c8, bishop to b2, and pawn to c5, knight bd2, short castles, and here as usual, in these Catalans, if black manages to get c5 without making too many concessions, he is perfectly fine. In this case, he might be even more than fine because white lost so much time reorganizing and white does have this long-term weakness on the c3 square. Short castles by Yu Yang Yi, c takes d4, bishop takes d4, knight to c5, the computer wants knight d5, but it normally transposes to 
to the game after rook c1, knight c5. Therefore, knight c5, perfectly fine move. Rook to c1 and knight to d5. And it turns out that white has some problems to solve. His construction is a little shaky. In some lines, knight takes b3 or knight takes a4. Or could undermine the support of this knight on c4. Bishop f6, and just intending to put the knight on c3, is another very annoying idea to meet. And Yu Yang Yi decides to address this idea of bishop f6 by going knight to e4, hoping to at least exchange one of the powerful knights. The world alternatives, the computer says queen to c2, but after bishop f6, black is extremely comfortable. So knight e4 played, and this gives Caruana a big choice. The easiest way to play is to just capture the knight on e4, bishop takes e4, then play f5, bishop somewhere, and bishop f6, once again pronouncing the weakness of the c3 square, and it turns out that white is still very much fighting for equality here. This is not an easy position to play at all. Bishop takes f6, knight takes f6. There are some troubles. On this diagonal, bishop c4 is always looming, ruining the white pawn structure. So black would be slightly better, without any risk. There are also some tactical possibilities. Karana decides on one of them. He plays the move knight to c3, which we'll look at in a minute. Another shot he had at his disposal here was the move knight takes a4. Also very interesting. Just trying to win a pawn. b a4, bishop c4. No good. I'm not quite sure what made him decide against it. My guess is that he did not like the look of queen g4, threatening checkmate and forcing black to play g6, sort of weakening the dark squares around his king, even though there does not seem to be a direct way for white to increase the pressure. Computer says queen to e2, and black is somewhat better after knight c3, returning that pawn. But hopefully getting rid of this powerful bishop. Like takes, takes. You have to get... You have to take again. And with this bishop disappearing from the dark squares. Black is obviously fine with the two bishops. Maybe slightly, slightly better. But Karana spotted a third option. And this leads the game on a very complex path. He goes for knight to c3. And his point is that this knight cannot get captured as easily as it looks. Because after knight takes c3, his idea is not to recapture on c3, after which white would be, would be fine, just rook takes c3, but instead to light the board on fire by playing knight takes b3. And all of a sudden, a lot of stuff is hanging. After queen takes b3, bishop takes c4, queen somewhere, bishop takes f1, Black would pick up material. Why is the recapture? Then you take here. You're an exchange up and pretty much winning. Instead of queen takes b3, the computer gives the move knight to b5. But yet again, it is black. That's in the driver's seat here. After knight takes c1, queen takes c1, queen to d7. The white construction remains extremely shaky. And black will pick up another pawn. Then have two pass pawns here. While his king is not under a lot of pressure because the white queen had to go on a little detour, is not well placed on c1. Understandably, Yu Yang Yi does not want any part of this, and he plays a much more aggressive and better move. He plays queen to g4, once again threatening checkmate on g7. Here, Karana had the chance to just parry this threat by normal means going g6, but after g6, now white is in time to first eliminate this knight, so it can no longer take on, c on b3, and after bishop takes c5, now take the other knight, Bishop c3, bc, rook c3. And in this position, white would, would be a pawn up. Black is probably okay because of two, his two bishops. His control of this square. But if anybody can be better, it's white. So this is not what Caruana had in mind. Instead, he plays a cunning move here. The move knight e2 check. He's basically giving up this proud knight he had for just one tempo to distract the white queen from th threatening checkmate. And after queen takes e2, which is forced because king h1, knight takes d4, eliminates the threat and just wins for black. After queen takes e2, now he goes knight takes b3. Once again, banking his hopes on the pin on this diagonal that this will allow him to recapture his material. Because currently, black is a piece up. However, things aren't so easy for white if he were to try to keep his extra piece by rook c2. Black would just politely ask how he intends to defend this knight in the future with queen to c7 and it turns out you can't do it bishop takes c4 is coming black is better 
The move the computer wants to play here is rook fd1, sort of forcing black to take on c1. And after knight c1, rook c1, the position is very, very strange. White has two pieces versus a rook and a pawn, which is a small material advantage for white, but he's still stuck in this pin. And according to my comp, this can't really be used because bishop f1 is coming and white manages to defend everything. And if he does, he can very easily be better because he has more pieces. So once he starts an attack, things could look bad for black. But I find it kind of understandable that Yu Yang Yi did not fancy this possibility because it's by no means obvious that you can ever shake off this pin. Instead, he played bishop b2. Similar idea, allowing Karana to take on c1 and then trying to deal with this pin, but removing his bishop from the d4 square. This gave black one extra opportunity that Karana does not seize in the game. In the game, he does take on c1 and we get this type of position. But he had the very interesting move, pawn to f5 here, trapping this knight in the middle of the board. Because the knight can't retreat, knight d2, knight takes d2, wins the piece back with dividends once again, queen d2, bishop takes c4, black is pawn up with a much better position. So you can't do that, therefore Yu Yang Yi would have to look for a way to keep the position complicated here. It appears that that way is rook to c2, leaving this knight hanging on e4. And after f takes e4, bishop takes e4, white would still very much be in business because queen h5 or queen g4 with an attack on the king's side is not easily dealt with. So Karana decides against this move f5 and takes on c1, rook takes c1. And in this position, he somewhat curiously decides to give up a central pawn by playing e6, e5. We couldn't really understand why he did that during the live show. And I still struggle with it, but it's very possible that there are already no great moves here. You could play a move like queen to d7, but queen g4 remains a big headache, unpinning this knight, which is now ready to jump, or just preparing knight ed2, coordinating everything. And if you have nothing better than taking here, it might be that black survives, but it's clearly not the type of position that Karana had in mind when he went for his combination. So it turns out that something has gone wrong. I'm not quite sure what Karana missed from afar. Maybe he wanted to go for this f5 move, but then decided against it. Maybe it was some some other move that escaped him. I'm not sure, maybe he was counting only on something like rook c2. But here, having arrived at this position, he clearly did not like what he saw and he decided to play the move e5. The whole point of this move being that after bishop takes e5, queen to d7, the g4 square is under control. Therefore, this counterplay with queen g4 threatening queen g7 is no longer available. But he did invest a valuable central pawn to achieve that. And it is no giant surprise that Compi thinks that white is much better now. Computer thinks the best move is knight ed2, just stabilizing over here, and then putting this bishop on d4 or on b2, depending on circumstances. Yu Yang Yi plays with bishop d4, starts with bishop d4, also very natural. This was not hanging yet. After all, safeguarding his bishop. And white remains better, but black had the chance to go for the move b4, b3 now throwing a bit of a spanner in the works, creating counterplay based on moves like bishop a3, maybe queen a4, maybe b2 under the right circumstances. And matters would not have been so simple. The computer continues with something like knight ed2, bishop a3, rook to b1, bishop b4, and is saying black is very much in the game. In Sekarana, maybe still a bit punch drunk from the way things have gone, goes for rook fd8, natural move, but sort of slow. And this allows Yu Yang Yi to bring in some more reinforcements, bishop to f1, once again, controlling this shaky knight and preparing to move the queen away to b2, maybe, since now this knight is covered. Karana understands there are no more resources to <coughs> sorry, increase the pressure on the c4 knight, and he refocuses on attacking the e4 knight, trying to make something happen on this long diagonal. 
During E goes bishop g2, Karana goes back now that this bishop moved away. And Yu Yongi also finds nothing better than bishop f1. Karana once again goes bishop b7. And very surprisingly to, I think, most people watching, Yu Yongi decides to repeat moves here once again by playing bishop g2. He didn't have to, he could have played f3. Not the prettiest move, but white is material up. White does have two minor pieces against the rook for not even a pawn. And that is a serious long-term material advantage. So this position just looks very, very unpleasant for black. Another option was to go knight to e5, followed by rook takes c8 to eliminate all these potential pins that have been haunting him for a while on the c-file. And after queen e6 takes takes, now to play f3. Well, once again, white has a pretty serious advantage. The game isn't over yet because his b-pawn provides some counterplay. But there is no arguing that white would be much better here. So somewhat curiously, Yu Yang Yi decides to repeat moves. And this game ends peacefully after bishop to a6. Bit of a dodge bullet there for Karana, who dominated the first stage of the game. Played some very nice preparation, as far as I can tell. Got a good position. And here after knight e4, maybe get a bit carried away with this beautiful idea of knight c3. Intending knight takes c3, knight takes b3, when he had safer options at his disposal that kept the advantage, like knight takes e4 or knight takes a4, as I mentioned. Anyway, a draw in the classical game and a Norway chess, that means we move on to the Armageddon stage. Armageddon means white has 10 minutes, black has 7 minutes, white has to win. In case of a draw, black gets the full point. So Yu Yang Yi, with the white pieces, has won both of his Armageddons that he played thus far in the tournament. And this time around, he goes for the move 1 e4, not d4. If you're confused by the ratings, I use the Blitz ratings here, which might not be super accurate. We don't have ratings for Armageddon. These are their Blitz ratings, 2709 versus 2771. But I have a feeling Yu Yang Yi is probably stronger in Blitz than his rating suggests. So e4 played. Karana goes for c5, knight f3, knight c6, an opening he learned about a lot about probably during and after the World Championship match where Magnus Carlsen employed this against him constantly. And Yu Yang Yi is saying, I don't want any Sveshnikov or Rosolimo. I'll play more solidly with three knight to c3. In this position, Carlsen usually goes e5, but Karana goes g6. And it turns out that Yu Yang Yi was not ready for a theoretical debate in these g6 lines, where the critical move is pawn to d4, takes, takes, bishop g7 bishop e3, knight of 6 bishop c4, and now black has to choose one move. There's many options here. Queen a5, castle followed by d6, castle followed by a5, castle followed by e6, and so on and so forth. But Yu Yang Yi doesn't want any part of it. In a must-win situation, he does not want to check Karana's preparation, and he says, let's play chess, goes bishop c4. But at the beginning of the game, his let's play chess approach badly backfires. Karana very easily Builds a good position in the center here with d5. And it looks to me like it's already white that should be concerned about equality. Ed, Ed, Yu Yang Yi goes bishop g5, which looks natural, threatening this pawn, but in reality just makes black's, black's position easier. A better way to play was probably something like rook e1, short castles, h3, stopping bishop g4. <coughs> but once again, black would be very, very comfortable. Some move like b5. Black has no problems. Bishop g5 was played. Karana plays h6. After bishop e7, knight e7, the pawn stays defended. Yuan Yi goes bishop h4. But that's sort of misplacing this bishop, and Karana does not think twice. We're going g5, bishop to g3. Short castle. He could already have played f5, followed by f4, boxing this bishop in further. A theme that we will see later in the game. So after h3, Karana and Yu Yang Yi keep making natural moves. Black's position is better. And Yu Yang Yi is very much struggling to even stay in the game because this bishop can always be locked up by playing f4, while white really has no targets for his play. Yu Yang Yi does well, however, not to collapse here. Plays pawn to b4, f4, bishop h2, and is at least fighting for some squares for his pieces. CBA be played. And here Karana, who once again, Started the game with seven minutes, did not have a lot of thinking time. Decides to keep things simple by going king to h8. Instead, 
If this was a classical game, I have no doubt that he would have gone for something more aggressive. Computer says g4, hg, bishop g4. It's already almost decisive. One big reason being that after, let's say, king h1, for example, bishop takes f3, gf. First of all, the white king is very weak, and secondly, this bishop, if you can't take the f4 pawn, will be impossible to get into the game. Computer lines continue a bit here, knight e5 or something, knight g1, knight h4, and he claims a decisive advantage for black, which is not hard to believe. Inside king h8 was played also fine, keeping control, c3, rook a d8, maybe threatening a sacrifice here or preparing g4 by overprotecting the d5 pawn. King h1, bishop f5, Yuengi goes for knight e d4, he needs to find some squares for his pieces, and this is where the game makes a bit of a 180 turn, because so far Karan has been dominating, and he could have continued to dominate by just taking this guy, and after knight takes d4, the easy seems to be to take on d4 yet again. And in this structure, both white bishops are really bad. Especially this guy, of course, who can sort of re-enter the game after f3, bishop f2, but would still remain very passive, while his colleague on a2 is not doing much better, staring at the black pawn on d5, but with very few active prospects. So this is what Karan should have played, and he would have very much maintained control. But instead he goes for rook f8 directly, and that changes the picture a lot, because now after knight takes f5, queen takes f5, d4, all of a sudden this bishop, instead of being boxed in, has a great career ahead of him on this long diagonal. Bishop b1, queen d3, and it's the black king now that's vulnerable because of these light square weaknesses. So the game has very much turned, and from now on it is Karana that has to pay attention and defend carefully. White is better. Queen f7, bishop b1, Karana understands what's going on, tries to exchange some pieces, to pronounce the weakness of this bishop on h2, but this bishop has a reasonable chance of re-entering the game via g1, the knight moves somewhere, f3. So yeah, white is better now. Yuan Yi allows the exchange of rooks, takes by going bishop g1, was also a legit option to keep the rooks on the board, but nothing wrong with bishop g1 working on the placement of this bishop, takes, knight takes, the knight might be on his way to c5, after knight c7, queen d3 is played, so that career no longer available. Queen c2 intending knight d3 along some lines, or knight d3 directly, were also very legit options. Queen d3, queen e6, knight to f3, bishop to f6, and you takes a good decision here. He goes knight to e5, offering up a pawn, but it's a very hot pawn. Obviously knight takes e5, queen h7, checkmate would not be ideal, so the only way to take this knight is bishop takes e5, and here after d takes e5, if black takes it yet again, then the formerly buried bishop could all of a sudden play a very prominent role if he made it to d4. The computer actually says that this pawn shall not be taken, and he recommends something like king g7, f3, king f7, say bishop d4, pawn to b5, try to keep the position as close as possible, and argues that black is still doing all right, he says. Zero, 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 as he often does. Karana, however, does take the pawn, and now after f3 his position has gotten very tough to play. He can't just allow white to stabilize and then open the position, so he has to go active, goes queen e1, pinning this guy, making use of the fact that king h2, queen g3 is always at least a move repetition for black. You play bishop c2, king g7, c4, dc, queen c4, and now with the two bishops on an open board, it is very much white who has the better practical chances. Computer still says equal after some deep move like h5 clearing this h6 square. But this is a very pleasant situation for white in a must-win game. Karana goes knight h4, natural move, keeping an eye on g2. But it turns out that the attack is not strong enough to distract the white pieces in a way he probably was hoping for. Yu keeps playing well improves his position here and puts the queen on d6 now, threatening queen b8, queen b7, queen a6, picking up a lot of stuff. On the queen side, Karana goes knight hf5, probably was a better way to play the move knight ef5, leaving this knight as an attacker, but of course it also exposes your king, and it's based on a very cute tactic that I wanted to show you guys after queen b8, king d7, queen b7, king d8. The typical defense for white against at least the threatened perpetual, knight g3, knight f1, 
which would happen after, let's say, queen a6. Here, black king of checkmate, but just to show the mechanism that if one king h1, knight g3 is a perpetual, which would be good enough in this Armageddon situation where a draw is as good as a win. So the move to prevent that would be bishop to c4, when knight g3, king h2 does not really lead anywhere, knight f1 would just get captured. <clears throat> but here, black has an amazing little resource which is pretty much impossible to anticipate in a blitz game, but it's cute. The best move here is queen to f1, leaving the queen on priest. The point being that if it gets taken, now black gives a perpetual with his remaining knight, or two knights. But really, this knight does all the heavy lifting. So in order to go for this line, Karana would have had to spot that resource queen f1, sorry, <clears throat> in this position, also threatening checkmate and white ha might have some way to continue the game but black would be very much in business. Instead knight hf5 was played threatening this perpetual but now the same theme we already know bishop c4 covering the f1 square works extremely well for white and white is in the driver's seat. Karana here both sides very low on time now defends very stubbornly coordinates his knights and understanding that a knight on g3 will not get the job done, puts it on e3, where at least it restricts to dark square bishop, and in some lines you could still dream of a mating attack, queen g3, queen g2. Yuyang Yi is better now with his extra pawn and the two bishops, but the conversion is by no means easy. And after queen d1, bishop e2. The computer says you can just continue running with b6, but Yu Yang Yi decides to offer the exchange of queens with queen to e2, which Karana politely declines, goes queen c1, keeping the spin alive. King h2, h5, trying to bring in the last resources to maybe create a counterattack against the white king. Bishop to f2, king to c7, going after this pawn. g4 was not a threat yet because that square is controlled. Queen e1, still offering an exchange. Queen c5, no thank you. King to g1, king b6. Queen a1, knight takes b5, and at least material is equal again. Yu Yang Yi decides that instead of trying to continue to win this position with queens on the board, where well, computer says king h1 and white is still much better because his king is safer and he has the bishops, that he will force the issue and go for, believe it or not, a pawn ending, because white can exchange everything here. And he does queen b2, king c6, takes, 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 bishop b3, if you left this knight on the board, position would just be a draw. So his idea was bishop e3, fe king f1, which at first sight looks like absolutely nothing because black can defend this pawn and he does. But after king e2, king to d4, g3, it turns out that black has to abandon this pawn, or at least a pawn, because he has to move something. h4 wouldn't help after g4, the pawn falls next move. There's only one way to draw here, so if you guys want to do some calculating, you can pause the video and try to figure it out yourselves. Karana did not find it during the game. Karana went king d5 and lost reasonably quickly after king e3, king e5, f4, king f5, king f3, he resigned because there is no saving this position after g f, g f, let's say king g6, king e4, king f6, why just advances f pawn, king f7. <clears throat> say h4, king f6, king f4, king g7, king g5, picks up the h pawn as well and wins very easily. So Karana resigned, but let's get back to how he could make a draw in this position. The only way to do this is to pawn, move pawn to g4. When white has two main tries, one is f, g, h, g, h4, creating a protected pass pawn, which is always nice, but now we see the point of g4, it cleared the e4 square for the black king, and turns out this position is a draw. The only try white really has is push his pawn with h5, and after king f5, king e3, king g5, let's say king e4, king h5, king f5, king h6. Black gets the opposition here, and if it's white to move, this position is a draw. With black to move, he would lose, but here king f4, king f6, g4, king g6, g5, king g7, and so on. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. There is no winning for white. So h4 doesn't win, and it turns out the alternative, fg, hg, hg, let's say, 
also doesn't win because after king e4, g5, king f5, king e3, king takes g5. Once again, the white king can't get in front of the pawn the way he would like to. And black easily makes a draw after king f3, king f5. So Karana misses this chance to go g4, goes king d5, loses the Armageddon. And that means that Yu Yang Yi remains, I think, unbeaten in Armageddon games and scores a big match victory against the world number two, who has not been doing so great in this tournament. He already lost a classical game to the other Chinese player, Ding Liren. And in this matchup, yeah, he almost more or less dodged a bullet in the classical when Yu Yang Yi decided not to continue in a very good position with extra material, but Karana did not manage to save the draw in the Armageddon game. Therefore, loses the match one and a half, half. Let's have a look at the results and the standings. In round number five, all the games were drawn. That means we got five Armageddons. And in these Armageddons, world champion Magnus Carlsen, needing only a draw with the black pieces, got that against MVL, wins that mini match. Same for Vichy Anand against Wesley So. We've seen Yu Yang Yi versus Karana. Ding Liren vs. Aronian was a big roller coaster where Aronian was first winning, then losing in a rook ending, and then managed to save the draw with a rook and two pawns against the white queen. Managed to build a bit of a fortress. And Alexander Grishuk arrives in the tournament by winning his Armageddon against Shah Mohammed Yarov after a horrible tournament thus far for Alexander Grishuk. In the cross table, the world champion keeps dominating, winning all his Armageddon so far and scoring a point or two points a win in the classical against alexander grishuk but yu yang yi is as we can see is doing very very well won his three armageddons defeated grishuk lost the game to wesley so but remains in second place the closest pursuer of the world champion then yeah you can see karana not having a stellar tournament lost all three of his Armageddons, won one classical, lost one classical. So, nothing to write home about for the world number two thus far. That was the game or match of the day, because really, most of these games of the day are two games if they go to the Armageddon from Norway Chess 2019 round five. I'm Jan Gustafsson, but Peter Swidler will be back with me tomorrow for the live show. So, if you can make it. By all means, join us. It's a show only for Chess24 Premium members, so you can still take advantage of one of the promotions we have going on for Norway Chess. For example, if you go to chess24.com premium and get a yearly subscription, you can get three extra months using the bonus code NORWAY2019. Thanks for watching and yeah, see you guys around.